six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three,
I have two choices. Either I'm a mirror or a whole. If I'm a mirror, I reflect back to people something they can name or recognize or think about or have an opinion about. I'm a mirror for their expectations, which all arise out of what they already experienced. But if I bypass all their expectations, even the expectation of the unexpected, then I'm a void, a hole in their experience. A void, and then only I'm something real instead of a mirror. Get it? A hole is real, bottomless, you could say, which is the closest you can get to it. If it's bottomless, it's real. If it's not, it's a mirror, and it isn't anything at all, really, if it's a mirror. I'd rather be real for some stupid reason. I don't want to be a mirror, thank you. Goodbye. Don't go yet. Say something. Why do I think you're not going to say anything? Well, I should at least give you a chance. Keep an open mind. Once, when I wore my boots, my hair caught fire. Wow, that was fun. Once, when I was driving in my new Cadillac, the ice cream I was eating dripped down the edge of my sugared cone and put spots on a red foulard necktie. Wow, that was fun. Once, when I was in school, I learned everything in a single day, and I was accused of being pushy. Once, when I had an unpredictable religious experience, I was made to eat supper a second time, because my family hoped I could watch the experience out of my psychological reservoir. What business was your father in? Wow! That was not fun! Hello to you all. I am here to minister and I shall. Tears shall flow from your eyes and run river-like beneath my feet. And I shall be supported and sweep towards you through the activity of your own tears. I shall drift into your very hearts. I shall heal you all. Do not ask how, or my power will evaporate. And you do want my power because you do want my power to work upon you, because you do want my healing. So let your tears flow, flow towards me, that I may have a method for reaching into your very heart. Why cry? The truth is as follows. It can't be said, the truth, which of course renders even that statement questionable. Hmm, this is my hand. Even that isn't the truth, which can't be said, because the hand you separate out from the rest of your body and the rest of the world in order to say, here is my hand, can't be separated really. Except, let me take a somewhat less contestable position than that even. The truth about my inner life can't be told, or yours, or anyone's. I love, I fear, I hate, I do fear. such and such an attitude hate. to such and such an object. Exactly. But not exactly at all. 
Whatever words you use to express any of those feelings are words you were born into. Words you can choose, all predetermined by the particular language you were born into. Because the test of time and millions of human beings having experiences have proved those words useful and exact and correct? No. Wait. Do be serious and careful for a minute and recognize it isn't true. Here's a picture of someone you love. Meditate upon this and upon your feelings and can you truly say that the words I love you or whatever subtle and intricate phrases you come up with really express the elusive cloud of shifting things that flicker through you on this or any occasion? I mean, before you give it a name, allow yourself to experience it and then sense whether or not the name really matches with total exactness. Wait a minute. Whether or not you agree with me, remember, I'm just answering your question why I'm crying. Well, I'm crying because there's no way to express my real feelings with a language that isn't my language. Whether or not you agree, that's why I'm crying. That's, that's expressing, expressing oneself. Or no, it oh no, it isn't. That's something I've been programmed to do also. Biologically, yes. biologically well, that biology isn't yes. Me. There's something well, that biology isn't me. There's something more. Oh, I'd go so far as to say, not only does all saved bear from the mark, even experiences, by which I mean, you have an experience, but the experience isn't an experience, you see, not yet. Something happens. You have an experience, but what you experience that you can feel consciously you experienced is not what you really experienced. That's my feeling about it. I don't have to defend my feelings, I suppose. Other people could have different feelings. But don't you see, my point is universally valid. Whatever you experience, even right now, you have no way of registering it to yourself completely as it affects you, which is both as an experience, ah, you say, I'm recognizing I have an experience, but that's on the basis of so many learned assumptions that you just took as they were, stuffed into you, because finally you went along with things everybody else said were the way to look at things and experience things and feel things, with one exception. What exception? What exception? My one exception. Once. I did escape once. Once. What's wrong? I've gone up. What? I've gone up on my lines. I thought you were speaking from the heart. Oh, come on. I think this is interesting, but I didn't have these thoughts. I memorized something that somebody else wrote, and now I'm... I'm blocked. Stare at that face. Use mental telepathy. It doesn't work. Here's the script, Neil. Shithead. Don't go really cool, Neil. You don't know who I was thinking about. Him. You. Maybe even myself. But I say the same thing. Don't know you're cool. Maybe even myself don't know you're cool. My exception. I did escape. One. Escape what? 
one experience that I believe didn't air, wasn't off the mark. I'll tell you about it. situation in my private life brought me frustration. Nothing major but frustration, and in irritation I threw myself face down on my bed with a feeling of giving up. At that moment everything changed, as if a switch had been thrown. The basis of my consciousness changed. It was as if my head were replaced with a glass sphere perhaps six feet in diameter, and everything in the outside world was seen as tiny images on that sphere. But those images projected somehow from the inside, as if their real source inside me. And this was accompanied by a feeling of joy and light and the sense that everything had been resolved once and for all, and there was nothing but completion and happiness in the world. And this, this state lasted in me for twenty minutes, and then it began to fade, but for perhaps a half hour, though it had gone, I could remember the feeling, and then I slept, and when I awoke, I could remember that I had had the experience, but could only remember the feeling in the form I could describe to myself in language, but no longer the real feeling as a feeling memory. Well, to me, that moment of paradise was the only experience I've ever had that I trusted that wasn't off the mark, off the mark, displaced, but free of the kind of slight mismatch that infects all experience and language and saying and memory as I see it. So that's where my tears came from, and even there, of course, I was crying to make you ask why I was crying. I haven't been able to tell you, or even myself, which is worse, what the singular experience was really like. I've lost it. You'll just have to keep trying. Ah, now that's the point. I can only try by getting behind my own ideas and words and experiences. That's why you find me hard to understand. I have to trick myself so that I don't get in the way of myself. Understand? I understand you're looking for an excuse for a lot of fuzzy thinking and irrational behavior. Oh no, I'm just trying to live in a world, well, that isn't a fallen world like this world. I'm afraid it's the world you live in. Yes, yes, but here's the game plan. Category 1. The material world. You live in it. Yes, I live in it. But it's not such a great world the way I look at worlds. Don't cry. Category 2. Forgive me, but Category 2 is the world of the spirit. I have to admit, I can't claim to live in that world of the spirit, if it exists. It better exist, shithead. 
I suspect there's a category three. Mm. Category three. Yes, that's the best I can do. If something can flow through me, flow through me in the right way, from those two other places at once, flowing through me, then I'm in category three. Welcome to category three. But we are still in category one, aren't we, Matthew? Don't call me by my real name, Neil. Welcome to category three. We're still in category one. Welcome to category one. Welcome to category one. Welcome to category one. Get into the gearbox. Get inside the control room. Get into the web. Get into the network itself. Get inside the circuit. Tacky but considerable. Tacky but considerable. Here it is. A piece of the truth. Balanced against the whole truth. Which is heavier? You'll get a real surprise. A real surprise. Mistake category three for category two, that is, randomness and chance. But the items of category three, though not connected, are in fact connected, but in a way that is not perceivable within our available grids. So it's taken on faith, as it were. But as somebody said, it moves mountains. It's that door to another world that is located in that other world. Go through it, but it's not in this world. 
So category three eludes logic. Yet is not random or chance-like, but is a connective tissue that cannot be traced, and yet is the one truly lively way of perceiving the world. It lays down the ground of the real being alive, where the other two categories, logic and chance, are predictable in their emotional kick. And don't kid yourself. That's the only lust that moves you, that lust for that emotional kick. So do you want a new one or an old one? A new emotional kick or an old one? What lays down the grid of real, alive living is Category 3. Category 3 is the only real source. This Category 3 which is a door that isn't openable from this side, but it opens. One must enter to be alive only category three, which one enters from death's side only into life. It is a category which people will call unnatural and irrational, but it isn't. It falls between the cracks of the normal rational. It is the ultimate fruitful location those cracks in reality which nurture because they are not reality, which is not alive, but seen through the perceiving mechanism, which means not touched really, just messages coming from far away through a very defective system ruled by fear and habit. So one should want always to be in that nurturing ground, which is category three. Welcome to category three. Should I observe myself breathing in and out here in category three? Try it, but don't let being distracted get you distracted. Welcome to category three. Welcome to category three. Welcome to category three. Shall I feel love and attraction to other human beings here in category three? Why not? Why not? What I mean is try it. Oh, oh, you just made the wrong move. I didn't move anything. Welcome to category three. Welcome to category three. Welcome to category three. Looking for something. Somebody needs to swallow his remaining inhibitions. Talk big. Let me get a handle on this. This is going right past me. Effectively not stopped. You better move fast. inside to get inside. You open the door outside to get outside. I didn't know how, but you did it. I didn't know I did it, but you did it. Plenty of people gave up on balance. The whole system went down the drain. Was I part of the system? Much to my surprise, yes comes up. Play with it? Why not? I'm a hell of a guy when the right ball comes rolling into my part of the landscape. Go to a good school. Go to your apartment. Go to the highest place in France. Go to Chinese laundries after deciding to have a good meal. Go to bed sometimes. Go to the country estate. Go to the waterfront, but exercise. Go to a garage. 
go to a farm, but first, go to a farm. Go to Earth. Go to short wave. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Go to meaning. Go to an encyclopedia. How's the language machine working? Tell me, how's the language machine working? Is the language machine working good? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. The language machine is working. How many words is the language machine turning out each day? Each day, two or three words. The language machine is not working good. No, the language machine is working good. Is there a difference of opinion as to whether the language machine is working good? Is there a difference of opinion as to whether the language machine is working good? Is the language machine working good? This is a dance I did in the privacy of my biggest adventure. Good is a no-no word. Don't make me Good. Is there a difference of opinion as to whether the language machine is working good? Good. Good. Chocolate pies. Chocolate pies. Here are some chocolate pies. Here are some beautiful chocolate pies. Here are some chocolate pies. Yum. Surprise. There's something to touch, but there's nothing to lick. I can still say chocolate pies. Eyes. Pies. Eyes. Now let's find them all. those pies. He tries and he tries to find those pies. Is there an energy field around chocolate pies that is some kind of energy other than a chocolate derivative? Look, you were the one who imagined it. Those pies are real, Buster. Two eyes don't prove it. Pies prove it. You got pies because you make it happen through your eyes. Then, how come I also brought up the issue of an energy field? Chocolate pies. Whoever tries to eat gets really shook up inside, so calm chocolate is something to psych out. Psych out. Speak to the world in pie form. Pie in the sky form. Chocolate pie. Chocolate pie.
whenever I feel bad, one word follows another word. I take it back. Too late, Peter. Repeat that. Too late, Peter. Repeat that. Whenever I feel bad, I try to make it worse to get better. Mm. Whenever I feel bad, I lie down. Nothing works, of course, except everything does. Whenever I feel bad, I cover my eyes with deliberation. I put my hands over my ears, like pillows. Whenever I feel bad, I try walking on ice, cold feet. Change. 
Who in this room can change? Who in this room can manifest a different aspect? Who in this room can get so deep into this book that reading it sends arrows into the brain? Who can make reading tears? Who can punch his eyes by looking at himself? Who can change that much? I realize that the change issue is the inside issue, but it's the outside issue. Suppose I put on a heretofore funny hat, and it wasn't funny. You know why? Because something different is at work in me, and I can't name it. But it doesn't have to have a name to be first rate. Welcome to Category 3. Welcome. You've heard about Category 3, not logic, not irrational accident or chance, something else, a crack, a twist in the very obvious thing in front of my nose, maybe even the nose. Here it is. Category 3. Can anything under the sun be Category 3? My nose. Can I catch it again? Category 3. How strange. You didn't try to expand upon that. But I could. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two. If I doubted you, I'd be glued to the floor by my feet. Isn't it strange? There's nothing further apart than two parts of the body, one of which is involved in smelling, and the other which gets you physically away from anything you would be smelling, except yourself. Or am I wrong? Do feet, in fact, get you away from your own self? I don't think so. That doesn't interest me. Only if you suppress a certain particular series of thoughts that come flooding somehow, flooding through the brain. Thank goodness I didn't experience that. How come you haven't picked up on Category 3? Category 3, as if willfully avoiding it. Category 3. Am I moving from the spot? I am not. Now I was not in Category 3. And now I am, not having left it. You join me without knowing it. Welcome to Category 3. Say yes. Welcome to Category 3. Yes. I was talking to myself. Ah, oh, you just left Category 3, unfortunately. I don't think I'll ever understand. Here's an experiment. Try touching your nose. Now find a way to hold on to it with the major part of the hand. Now breathe through the nose. Okay, I changed my voice. So I sound funny. Ah, uh, that's Music to my ears. Yes, but is it really Category 3? Category 3. Of course not. I've been manipulating you. For no good reason. Just like that. Show me your hair. Of course. Did you make that request just pop out of my unconscious? Somebody did it. Now I'm into my own time frame, and I like it, sort of. I'm going to support my body. Yes, do that all the time. I'll have to develop my back muscles. Please do. Please do. Please do. Please do. I can't say what I'm hoping for. Back muscles that become so excessive, everything is beyond imagining, to say the least. Which is to say, nothing, but we do go that far. Am I growing a letter or two 
coming from out of my back. I'm waiting here with pad and pencil. And as soon as you see one of the letters rising from one of the back muscles... I'll write down whatever I see. Somebody knocked. Somebody fell down. Somebody else said, hello, hello, but they weren't talking to me. No, they were. Somebody telephoned. Somebody tried capturing my attention. Help, I offered. Somebody imitated me. Somebody attacked me, but I was on vacation. Somebody felt bad. Somebody smiled. Why, I wondered. I didn't know it was involuntary. I expected it to turn into a face, but it didn't. I forgot about it. I forgot about it. In this city, capital of thought, illness is permitted, and verbal behavior is by definition what leaves something out. Entrapment, the name of the game. The statements made are the statements in which you fill in invisibly certain blanks. Then, revealed naked as you really are, the verbal police close in for the kill. I have no reason to be unhappy with anything you say. Because what you leave out, I can fill in however I like with my imagination. And you always leave things out. So me, I'm on Happiness Street. And to celebrate, I make dictionaries of private intention, which a certain kind of person responds to by crying, Foul! Foul! But that word also I can pull into an idea, into an idea that of turbulence and exuberant. Defiant. So what if my friends Exuberate. say, why did you join the verbal police? How could you, how could you do that? The answer is, I like power sometimes. And having said that, everybody looks at me in a different light. Oh, now I get it, they say. He's out for kicks. That I can understand, I think to myself. You don't know what you reveal about yourself when you say, I'm out for kicks. Do I write you up? Of course I do. But you'll never know whether it's punishment or gratification, so I'm as mysterious as ever in your eyes. That's what it's like being part of the verbal police. City of language intrigue. Easy to meet people who seem to be using the same words over and over. But really, each time it's a blow to a different part of the body. The telephone is for you. I'm being challenged to respond, but I defiantly seal my lips. Having done that, I'm ready to handle the receiver. It wasn't for you after all. I'm not fooled. I make of things whatever I choose. You, of course, would maintain that in your own way you're doing much the same. But the difference is, I have at my command not your guttural virtuosity, and therefore lack your nothing but pure pre-word noise network. I simply use statement in the most perverse way possible, and thereby end up far outdoing even your spectacular physical methods with my private syntactical articulations. Here, they'd like you to pick up your end of the conversation. What do you know? Verbal police. 
verbal police. You? Ah, did you think I was pretending you were a mirror? I am, you know. That's why I have myself reflected. Thank God I can see who I am whenever I run into you fellas. Did he do that with his throat? Not necessary. It's in the code. Seneca, the Stoic, stole into the night. Sure, sure, sure. Three times, I can double that. Sure, sure, sure. Was I a Stoic like Seneca was Stoic? You proved it, I think. The verbal police are watching, so proof was an act of desperation in this case. Does that count? Stoics also count. Up to three. Does that count? Stoics also count. Up to three, which is proved. But that achieve, limitless numbers are also assumed inside the numerological grid that suddenly snaps into conscious presence. Ah, a magic square in the mind. No. The minute the verbal police stake out their claim, all that mind stuff is persona non grata mind. And the language game turns into the only town anybody can live in. Did you say live? Did you say open a door? I said, find out where you live, because this is where you do live. But I don't know if that's what you want to call it, since accuracy is something a little bit slippery. Like ice on glasses. Like butter on sharp steel. On stone. On marble. Iron. Wood. Tin. Paper. Gold, bricks, plastic, wood, bricks, gold, 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 I do mental wrestling. I do mental juggles. Everything. Drop almost everything. There's nothing to be said. Hold on to this for me. There's nothing to be said. Your own question has a peculiar answer. Oh, twice four. Of course. Two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Ice. One, two, three. Ice slip on. Non ice. On. Now I am thinking. Non ice. Bad idea. Breaks. Breaks something. Okay. Break something. Three, four, five, six, one, two, three, city, four, five. Six. City of materials. That's how deep my dream goes, and it goes deep. The spirit of things, not here floating about for just anybody to catch, because the material matter is swamping all those who do get swamped. The substance delineation is rolling over me like a wave of sudden understanding. 
And I think that substance inside you just needs me, frankly, to get my hands in there to do a sort of manipulation which to outsiders is going to look like mental massage. That excites me, but not enough. When you say excited, you're still traveling in the realm of the self-contained. Could I count on you for anything but a series of premises that pan out to nothing? But all my premises pan out, pan out. Because when you beat something as thin as the world's thinnest sheet of any unusually valuable substance, that mental cornucopia can pour out over a whole world that has its own secret name. And the name is itself itself. You recognize that name, I'm sure, hidden in some of your favorite evocative nouns like wood, glue, iron, flesh, brain, steel, metal, gold, fabric, fiber, flesh, gold. Those words almost turn it around for me. Those aren't words. They don't function like words because you put out your hand and groped towards the wrong real thing. The way out? Too late. Too late. I'll make a fast exit Open, open the door, no more. Open, no door, there is no door. There is a door, I don't see a door. Sure, there is. The door out is outside. The door in is inside. Am I outside or inside? You want to get out? or in. I want to get out. That's where the door is. I want to get in. Ah, that's where the door is. I don't see no door. I don't see no door. I don't see no door. Doctors of death on the rampage again, spreading their violence wherever they can. Poison that punishes, poison that kills, really the medicine cure for your ill. Sadness on sadness piled up to the sky. Only escape is escape if you try. Methods that cross to hell and they don't. Lift yourself right into will through a world. Twist the matter behind the mind. 
So the grain irritant oyster goes snap at the brain spark that lights up my whole world at least. Roll, roll, one word that's all words. Roll, roll, I got no ocean in my ocean. Space out, phases, phase, phase. Don't get lost eating your basis. It goes out in a big circle, loops back and says the triple dip dips me, you, and everybody in good stuff. When I stuff, I say stuff, more stuff, phase it, phase it, phase it, phase it. Veronica came into my life like a cyclone of plastic. Who got off first? Hard to say, but when I stepped down from the talk-a-lot bus, boy, was I hot. Phase it, phase it, one word that's all words. Phase it, phase it, that means cool out the whole planet. Airedale and more, my holes to vent, blocked up by the information. That wasn't Veronica's trip. So my return ticket, stuck up, tickled me, and I couldn't phase it, phase it. So instead I phase it, phase it, phase it all the time, phase it. Free. Mm-hmm. 